Welcome, dear viewers, to Couch Warrior TV on YouTube. I am the Couch Warrior, and you are watching Aranus Arcana, a Skyrim Let's Play. Welcome to Chapter 4, Part 13. When last we left off, Fleet had journeyed all the way to, well, nearly to Windhelm. Starting at, uh, Markarth, where we picked up our contract to kill Elaine Dufont. We journeyed as far as a small campsite along the river, not far from our target's location, and now we are making our way in to perform the assassination. So what we've been told is that our target, Elaine Dufont, is inside this Dwemer ruin with a bunch of his bandit cronies. And in the last episode, I put a call out to try to get some opinions from, from everybody on how we should do this. Should we go in and kill everybody? Or should we just surgically remove Elaine Dufont? <clears throat> well, the opinions were mixed, but predominantly, people wanted me to have Fleet go in here and really just try to surgically remove the target and not anyone else, because it seemed like it was more of a challenge. So I am up to that challenge. However, I am going to remove all the sentries outside. This is mainly because I don't want them to be blocking our escape when we finally do leave. I don't know if I can hit this. No. Off the geometry. All right. I'm going to put one into the stairs, pull him back away from the cliff face. I nearly gave myself away there. Let's finish this guy off. We've got one thug left. I'm going to try to pull him back away from the cliff face again. He's getting way too close, but he hasn't spotted us yet, so... Let's try to pull him out into range. There we go, one more. All right, one, two, three. Sentries are eliminated. You know, I'm not going to just, I'm not going to take the time to loot these guys. I really want to get down to business here. It is cold out, so we need to get inside and get ourselves prepared to do the real mission. So screwing around outside with dead bodies is, is not going to get us there. Okay couple things I'm going to want to do here. First is, for mobility's sake, we are going to ditch the hide cloak. And I'm going to switch over to, I've got this necklace of lock picking, so we'll put that on. We may as well level up while we're at it. Wow, look at those stats. See, that's how the cold is affecting us at this point, so we're going to have to deal with that too. So we're going to dump our points into Magicka, one perk into Alchemy, and I think I'm finally going to spend this perk that we've been banking for so long. We'll maybe pop it into Sneak. I'm not really excited about the idea of Lightfoot, but I am excited about Silent Roll, and we are high enough level to get Silent Roll, so that's kind of the only thing standing in my way of that perk. So we're going to go ahead and take that Lightfoot. All right, we're going to apply some Muffle here and make our way past that guy. Now remember, our objective here is we are going to kill the bandit leader, Elaine Dufont. And we are going to attempt to do it without any of his goons realizing it. So first, let's scope this out. So we got one straight ahead in front of us. We'll go around here, sticking to the shadows. We're going to see if we can spot some more of them. Yeah, see, there's one standing in the hall down there. That is a problem. I'm use a spell here. Goose the muffle. Then we're switching to a, a spell called Banish Light. We're going to shut that light out. We're going to see if we get a reaction. No, they all seem fine at this point. They didn't notice. Put out that light as well. Okay, now we got their attention. Nope, there's three of them. There's three of them. So we are going to 
hide behind this pillar. Okay, we will let them go the direction of the sound. And we are going to sneak around behind them here. Alright, that went okay. They still seem preoccupied. Let's go down here. There's our target right there. There's two goons sitting around the fire with him. But it looks like we've got some high ground. We're going to go to the high ground and see if we can, we can use that. All those stairways and platforms that scaffolding has to go somewhere. So let's see if... All right, they're back in their original positions. Let's see if we can get through here. There we go. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to close this behind me too. Reason I'm doing that is because it provides an auditory cue if I if they somehow get on to me, right? And they start coming up behind me, I'm going to hear the sounds of those gates opening and I'm going to know that what is this? I don't think I've ever seen Dwemer constructs inside here before. Maybe I don't remember it. They don't seem to be paying any attention to me at all. That is very strange. Okay, this is actually a good position for us. Let's scope out our target. Okay, he's behind that pillar. So we can use that pillar for cover, but we got to get his goons out of there first. So let's pull back a little bit here. Get our bow going, and we're going to use... Our bow, we're going to try to draw the goons up here. I don't know if Elaine Dufont is going to come up here with him. If he doesn't, great, we can isolate him. Let's put this light out too. If he does, then we can go and get ourselves into killing position. Yeah, he's staying down here. Let's make our move. Gonna make it quick. Make it quick. All right. He's got this fancy hammer, Aegisbane. We're going to take that. That's all we're taking. And then we are going to plant our steel throwing knife. That is our ego signature, if you remember. Our calling card. And we are going to head for the darkness. And we'll take this stuff, too. Okay, now, I could try going up that other ramp. Um, I'm thinking I want to avoid it for now. I'll, I'll go up that other ramp as a last resort. The path is clear for escape there. However, there's a lot of light at the entrance to that ramp. There's another lock to pick. And we have some kind of fire trap on the way out to contend with. If at all possible, I would like to leave the same way I came in. I just don't know if that's possible. There's so many bandits kind of choking this hall. From this direction, it's really a problem because there's no room to maneuver. So I'm going to try a couple things, see if I can draw these bandits out and give myself a, a free shot at, at getting out this other way. If it doesn't work, then I'll go, I'll go the route of that, that other ramp with the fire trap on it. I'm going to try to draw this guy down the hall. My objective is to see if I could draw him far enough down that he might go through that gate. If he, if he went through that gate, I might be able to sneak around behind him. I don't think he's taking my bait. Okay, buddy. Oh, yeah. Okay, we're going to try again. I'm just putting arrows into the wall and, and tracing a trail down the hall where I want him to go. Come on, go in there. Oh, crap. Don't come down here. <laughs> go in there. 
be great if they got in a uh, fight with those spiders. That would be awesome, but it doesn't look like they're going to do it. We may have to cut our losses here. Remember, the objective was not to leave any dead bodies lying around except for Dufont, so I think I'm going to have to... Yeah. He stops right there in the hall. The only way I think I could take him out would... I, I would have to take him out. I don't think I could sneak past him. Let's go down and scope out this direction. We got two goons here sitting around the fire. We might be able to draw them back up the stairs. <clears throat> we'll try that, see what happens. Got to be careful with this, right? I don't want to draw them toward the source. I want to draw them toward the sound. So, hey, look, serial assassin chiming in. We'll talk to him in, in a bit. Okay. Hello? Who's there? Must be my imagination. Okay, I'm going to slip around here. Now, luckily, when they're in their resting position, they're both facing away from this door. So, with their backs to us, we might have a shot at picking this lock and getting through here. Let's close it behind us. All right, we're almost out of here. Now we just have to negotiate this trap. I think I could probably get through this and survive the damage, but just to be on the safe side, I'm going to wait until there's some something of an opening here rather than getting hit by two jets, maybe one. Yeah, there's one. Yeah, that hurt a little bit, but it wasn't too bad. What I don't want to do is be popping any spells right now. Okay, now we are going to carefully move back out the way we came, avoiding all the junk lying on the floor. And we are done. Elaine Dufont, dead. The rest of the bandits alive. Except for these poor guys outside. But it's still quite early in the morning. Before they discover those bodies, we'll be long gone. Okay, there's a, there's a bear on the hillside down there, so we're going to take a circuitous route here. Give him a wide berth. Not interested in tangling with a bear. Ooh, I'm freezing. I forgot to put the cloak back on. That's okay. It shouldn't be so bad that I can't get back to the campsite. And once I get back to the campsite, I'll deal with it. Right now, I'm interested in getting as much distance between myself and the target as I possibly can. So I don't want to stop. <clears throat> well, mission accomplished. Target is deceased. Now, if you remember, Miri gave us a bonus contract of Nilsine Shatter Shield in Windhelm. We are very close to Windhelm, but I have made the decision that even though I have accepted the contract to kill Nilsine, I am not going to kill her yet. And the reason for that is that. I'm feeling like this close to the assassination of Dufont, I don't really feel like strolling into Windhelm with the blood still warm on my hands. And besides, our objective now, if you remember, is we are going to head to Riften and we are going to put a nail in the uh, quest for Maven Blackbriar at Haunting Brew Meadery. And I'm pretty sure that the next quest we pick up at the Thieves' Guild is going to take us back through this area again. If that's the case, then we'll do that second assassination on the way through. <clears throat> okay, viewers, I really apologize for the condition of my voice, but uh, there's very little of it left. It was a, a rough week. I was sick most of the week and spent a lot of time in meetings, presenting to clients, talking, 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 talking. By the time Friday came, I had almost lost my voice entirely, so it comes and goes on me, but we're fighting through. 
All right, I put the cloak back on. We're warmed up by the campfire, and we are going to get to Windhelm. So it's still really early in the morning, so my guess is we'll have to kill some time once we get there, but I'm not interested in going into the city. I want to get as far as the stables. Then we are going to, I think, purchase a horse. and make our way as quickly as possible to Riften. It's getting interesting because we've got these two competing interests right now. We need to keep the Thieves Guild happy because that network needs to be open to us and thriving. And we also have this newly evolving passion around the Dark Brotherhood and Sithis and what's going on there. And so we're kind of in this position where we're constantly having to alternate between these two organizations. So that lends a little bit of urgency to what we're doing here. So getting a horse and getting to Riften as quickly as possible um, is going to be essential. We don't want to waste a lot of time. So it's too early to buy a horse yet, so I think we'll, we'll have to kill a little time here. This is the one we want. I'm not interested in stealing it. Incidentally, there was an interesting discussion going on regarding, what was it? I think it was part 12. Part 12, where Fleet was on the road between Markarth and Windhelm. If you remember, we uh, stole a nobleman's horse. One of my objectives there was to try to set up a situation where the horse would be abandoned, so actually taking the horse wouldn't be viewed as stealing. And even though um, they were attacked by the Forsworn and pretty much eliminated, um, after talking with viewers and reviewing the footage, um, I am clearly in trouble with the authorities in Markarth there. So there's, there's a bounty for the theft of the horse, on Fleet's head in Markarth, and there's also a bounty on his head, I believe, for the killing of the Imperial soldier that was escorting that nobleman. So that's something we're going to have to contend with when we go back to visit our client, Muri. We're going to have to be aware that there is a bounty on our head, and a confrontation with the soldiers there could be a problem for us. So I'm not concerned about it. I think it makes... It makes things more interesting, so actually I think it's kind of cool. It's just going to mean we're, we'll have to be that much more stealthy. And what I'm going to attempt to do when returning to Markarth is to see if I can actually enter the city, talk to Miri, collect on our contract, and exit the city without being confronted about my crimes. So if we could pull that off, that would be amazing. Um, but it's going to be exceedingly difficult, so we'll give it a shot, though. I guess what I'm saying is when we go in there, though, we have to be prepared to pay um, our bounty uh, on the way in. We better be darn sure we've got enough money to pay that bounty. Otherwise, we could end up really stuck. So, May your road lead you to warm sand. All right, I think we'll just kill some time these Khajiit over here. Borrow the warmth of their fire while we wait for the stable keeper. So let's see, maybe uh, three hours. We'll give it three hours. Try that. as wares if you have coin it's not there yet still locked up well I guess we'll give him a couple more hours try again
There he is. Oh, pardon me. Was I in your way? Can I buy a horse? It's for sale if you got the coin. Here's my offer. That's One thousand gold. Offer? That that's a lot, man. So. She's the one with the saddle. So All right. The difference between life and death is a swift steep. Well said, sir. Well, let's get moving. So at this point, I'm going to make this ride pretty much a straight shot to the gates of Riften. I don't plan on stopping for anything. I'm going to try to make the best possible time we can. It'll be good to be out of the snow as well. And then I think the plan is that once we, we get to Riften, there's a few things to take care of. One is that we need to turn in this quest for Maven and let her know that everything is is good at Haunting Brew and collect our payment there. I think um, I'm also going to go over my loadout, look at all my gear, and figure out if there's anything else that I need to take care of while I have the opportunity. We've been so focused on each of our missions that we haven't spent an awful lot of time crafting and making sure that we have all the gear that we need. I think we're sort of at the stage now where it's time to start thinking about, you know, creating the alchemy gear, creating smithing gear, making a couple more enchanted items to kind of reinforce our archery. That's one thing I have not taken the time to do yet. And I'm not entirely sure how much of that I'm going to be able to do. That sort of stuff is, is much easier to accomplish when you're living in a place where you can store things. We're not there yet, obviously, but that is on our to-do list. So I'm just going to take it as it comes. We'll, we'll see what's available in Riften. We'll do what we can to get started, and then we will uh, take on the next mission. And then as soon as we have that opportunity to put together some place to live, we'll take care of that too. Once that happens, we'll be able to get a lot more accomplished. So at this stage, we've hit level 25, still using the bound bow. I think we still have quite a long ways to go before the bound bow starts becoming less effective. At this point, we are really only using two pieces of enchanted archery gear. Oh, troll. I'd love to stay and play. You know how I love to play with the trolls, but... Got places to be. So, you know, it's possible for us to get at least a couple more pieces of gear, which would be great. I want to thank everybody for becoming uh, so involved in the conversations around this character. It makes me feel good to know that people are starting to identify with Fleet and caring about what he does next. And I've been getting lots of messages from people uh, on YouTube and then also a few private messages as well with, with people wanting to engage in conversation about Fleet, his motivations, his psychology or psychosis, depending on uh, <laughs> how you view that. There have been some interesting questions lately about whether or not Fleet is fatherhood material. To be honest, I could see him possibly, under the right circumstances, I could see him possibly being a father. I'm not so sure about a husband, however. I think uh, if that were going to happen, it would have to be a very special individual indeed. Um, what that means, I don't know. Um, probably somebody who shares his sensibilities, which are kind of strange, kind of dark. We are going to avoid all this. I get the sense that our enemies are running up against each other behind us, and if that's the case, that's fine with me. 
So I want to thank everybody for uh, participating in those conversations. Um, there have also been some interesting conversations um, regarding Fleet and his outlook on the Civil War and his approach to that. And that topic is definitely going to warrant more discussion in the not-too-distant future. There's going to come a point shortly where I think we'll have to make some decisions about that civil war and how we want to proceed. But at this point, my feeling is that he would definitely side with the Imperials and he would choose to be an actor behind the scenes, to be in the shadows, and would not stick his neck out necessarily, um, but would participate kind of from the darkness. So here we are. We've reached the end of another episode. Thank you for taking the journey with me. And until next time, may all that you do be swift, quiet, and deadly. And to all Skyrim assassins, I salute you. Silence is our battle cry. You've been watching Aranus Arcana, a Skyrim Let's Play. If you liked this video, please rate, like, and subscribe. For more information on this and other Couch Warrior broadcasts, visit me on the web at www.couchwarrior.tv.